from taking inspiration from a California-based motorcycle club to having the main character inspired by an actual old-school gunslinger. Here's all you need to know about the real-life biker gangs that inspired Sons of Anarchy. What the hell did you do? Jury admitted he was the one who routed us to the Chinese. The TV show might have ended by now, but the number of new fans it gets every year is crazy. And with new fans come questions about the show's backstory. Is it based on real events? Were the Sons of Anarchy really a gang? Well, if you thought that all the wild storylines couldn't have come from someone's imagination, then you're right, at least sort of. The action crime drama took inspiration from the California-based Joker gang, the Hells Angels, which to this day are one of the largest and most famous motorcycle clubs in the world. They're so well known that the United States Department of Justice and Europol consider them to be an organized crime syndicate. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds enough to get them their own TV show. The club might have been founded in California, but it's not quite an international membership. Did you know that there are around 3,500 members of the gang worldwide? That's not all. They've got 467 chapters in 59 countries. How insane is that? As far as I know, this gang was originally founded all the way back in March 1948. Although some accounts differ, many believe that their birthplace was Fontana, California. Apparently, motorcycle enthusiast Otto Friedley formed the gang. He borrowed the name from a World War II vet who flew with a squadron that went by the name Hell's Angels. Dope backstory, isn't it? Now, being one of the most famous gangs in the world comes with super high standards. This is really reflected in their membership process. Did you know that the Motorcycle Club is a four-phase membership process? That sounds pretty thorough. If you're interested in joining these outlaws, then you must have these things. Number one, the right personality. That makes sense. You've got to click with the people. Otherwise, it's a big waste. Number two, a Harley Davidson. That's right. It's the only motorcycle you're allowed to drive in the gang. And number three, a contact. You need to know at least someone who's already in the gang. That way, they know you can be trusted. If you pass these three phases, only then will you be welcome to the last one, where the members see if you're really worth becoming a full-patched member. And let me just put this out there. Becoming a member of this gang takes longer than becoming a police officer or even a doctor. But once you're in, you can't just say goodbye. The club follows a really strict code of honor, including not leaving. But if you're kicked out, that's a completely different story. It kind of makes sense, though, considering the fact that all the members consider each other brothers. Life as a Hell's Angel is pretty tough. You need to be up for some hardcore partying and have a passion for motorcycles. Apart from this, you must be patriotic. Did you know that an average angel rides around 20,000 kilometers in a year? Sounds pretty demanding, but hey, I guess it's worth it once you get to call yourself a Hell's Angel. Since the club's been around for a while now, they follow a strict hierarchy. First comes the president, who leads the way in a formation. A vice president will follow him, and then the road captain. After them comes the sergeant at arms. All these people make up the top group, potential members or the prospects right in the end. As for the remaining members, they find a place for themselves somewhere in the middle. That's enough for the gang. Let's talk about how they inspired the Sons of Anarchy. Now, if you think that the showrunners got the inspiration for the story because they passed by the gang one day, well then, you'll be pretty wrong. Because actually, the Hells Angels were very involved with the creation of the show. So much so that it's said that some parts of the plot were actually inspired by real events. I'll be getting into all that later. Don't worry. Apart from this, did you know that many real-life members of the gang were actually a part of the show? That's not all. A member, David LaBrava, even acted as show creator Kurt Sutter's technical advisor how cool is that? Speaking of gang members being cast in the show, you might actually even remember some of them. La Brava actually got a reoccurring role in the series, and basically, he paved the way for his fellow gang members to join the series. He played the character of Happy Loman, one of the club's most dangerous members. A fit in casting, don't you think? La Brava's character started as a part of the Tacoma, Washington Charter, but he didn't stay there for long. He moved on to the Nomads, after which he became a full-patched member of the Sons of Anarchy. Jackson, want me to help? I'm in. Can't tell you much, other than where to point the gun. I'm okay with that. Hands up if you already expected that. Now, David might have been the only member who got a reoccurring role, but he definitely wasn't the only one who appeared on the show. There were actually three other Hells Angels members in the cast. Do you remember Rain Quinn, the member of the Indian Hills Charter? and also the president of the Nomad Charter? Yeah, he was played by Rusty Coons. He was actually brought to Sam Crow by Bobby, who was looking for new members. And guess what? Rain even made it to the final episode of Sons of Anarchy. This is when he voted to favor Jax Teller, the main character, meeting Mr. Mayhem. Another gang member in the cast was Chuck Zito. He played Frankie Diamonds from the Nomad Charter. Frankie ended up getting transferred to Sam Crow. He's the same guy who was involved in a bunch of home invasions planned to discredit the club. 
Now, Frankie's fate in the club wasn't that good. He was killed for his betrayal. Did you see that coming? The third gang member in the cast was Ralph Sonny Barker. He played Lenny Janowitz, who was one of the first nine. Yep, I'm talking about the founders of Sam Crow. This backstory is actually pretty fitting for him, because Barger was a very important member of the Hells Angels. He was the founding member of the Oakland chapter of the gang, and he was even present at the Altamont Free Concert, where one of his fellow members stabbed someone to death. Yikes. Lenny might not have appeared in more than three episodes, but that was enough for him to leave a rather sizable impression. Now, was the storyline accurate with so many gang members on the show? Guess what? It actually was. The ranking system I mentioned before, the show followed that and the initiation process for the prospects that's also a part of the real-life traditions, although it's pretty rare. Replace it with this, young brother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some initiation rites are very brutal. One last thing the show got right was racism and misogyny. When the Hells Angels said they were brothers, they took that a little too literally. Most of the members in the group are white, and there are pretty much no women. If some do venture in, like in the show, they definitely don't have any power. So I guess that's where the show got it slightly wrong. You see, Gemma had some power in the series, but if she were really in the Hells Angels, it would have been impossible. I love you, Jackson. From the deepest, purest part of my heart. Coming to Jax, the main character of the show, did you know that his life was actually based on a real person? The story might have been borrowed from Shakespeare's Hamlet, but the characteristics and demeanor, that was all from this motorcyclist, whom the actor Charlie Hunnam hung out with on several occasions. Their interactions were actually something the showrunners encouraged, probably to make sure Charlie knew his character inside out. When talking about this guy, he told the media that he was 22 years old and was the real-life Jax Teller. From what the actors said, this young man also had the same fate as his character. How tragic is that? Hunnam also shared that the motorcyclist was the heir apparent and that since his father was in the club, he'd been a part of it his whole life. It's clear that the actor found the biker's presence very inspiring. He later recalled their encounter, saying that he had an amazing presence about him. He described the young man as an old-school outlaw cowboy who was a modern-day gunslinger. Well, that sounds like someone straight out of the Wild West, but as I mentioned before, he had a very tragic fate. Just like the show's Jax Teller, he was also killed. Here's something that would definitely make you cry. He left Hunnam his necklace, which the actor keeps with him all the time as a memorial. How wholesome is that? I'm guessing that Hunnam had such a close bond with a young biker that he based Jax completely on him. I'm not kidding here, guys. The way he dresses, the way he acts, everything is based on that one biker he met in Oakland. Can you even imagine how different everything would have been if the actor had never met the guy? Jax Teller definitely would have been as authentic. On that note, from having the main character inspired by a real-life old-school gunslinger to taking many pages out of a California-based motorcycle club, that was all you needed to know about the real-life biker gangs that inspired Sons of Anarchy.